Hello, Gainalyn Condi here for Come Follow Me Study, and we are in the book of Corinthians, first book of Corinthians. Um, this is um, interesting because this is a lot of teaching from Paul to the saints in Corinth, and there's some issues happening in the society. And before I get into any of these chapters and my thoughts on this study this week, there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, that may bring up topics in your family, depending on the makeup of your family, divorced, mixed, faith, um, maybe you're single. Um, so I just want to invite you to consider that Paul is teaching a certain culture with certain laws, like slavery is legal, um, at a certain time. And this is why we like in the scriptures but we also defer to the current teachings of our modern day prophets. So one of the things I'm going to encourage is that you have the Gospel Library app nearby or the Gospel Topic essays that are really helpful in some of these conversations that come up from New Testament and Old Testament times. Um, 1 Corinthians um, chapter 1, Paul is greeting the saints in Corinth and he's worried about unity. And I think this is a perfect time to talk about what unity is, what belonging looks like, what connection looks like. Is it happening in your family? Is it happening in your ward family? Is it happening in your neighborhood? I have come to know through my own study that the Savior wants to return to a Zion people. And, and Zion for me is one heart and one mind. And that to me is the definition of unity. And so as he's talking about um, this unity to the people of Corinth, we can talk about it within our own realm of influence. Are we having unity? Are we being of one heart and one mind? He is preaching to them in a way um, that is very vulnerable and honest, um, almost like, you know, how many awkward missionaries are out there serving? I, I thought of this as, as he's preaching to the people of Corinth. I've I've had missionaries in our home many times and sometimes missionaries come in and they know the scriptures and they're super personable and they know how to interact. And other missionaries, you can tell socially, they are completely out of their comfort zone and this is a total act of faith to be in somebody's home and, and even interacting on a mission. And I have had experiences where the most awkward missionaries have the most tender spirit about them. And so I really love that in 1 Corinthians, we learn about how God consecrates the weak and he strengthens us. So if you have missionaries out right now, I think these are really good verses to share with your missionaries. Um, I love that the atonement is an enabling power. And um, there's a verse in, uh, in 1 Corinthians that talks about the base things. And that is the humble and the weak, not the base things um, that are wicked at times. And I love as we go into chapter two, where we kind of see these great missionary lessons that Paul's teaching. Verse two is teaching the plan of salvation. Verse three is teaching um, in your weakness. And verse four and five is about the Holy Ghost declaring your truth and helping you declare truth to those that are listening. And so once again, if you have missionaries out or if you're struggling in your calling, I think these are really good chapters and verses to help. Um, the Spirit really does do the teaching and the work that I do as a speaker. It's not me. I try to fill up my well each day and read my own scriptures and say my prayers and study and prepare and go to the temple when I'm about to go speak. But it's the Spirit that I ask to be there because the atonement of Christ can enable um, me to speak only as so far as I invite the Spirit to be with me. If I'm just like, I've got this, I don't need God, um, it's a totally different experience. So the Spirit allows us to not only teach, but also to discern. And the saints are being quickened by the Spirit. And and Paul is saying, if you, if you do um, exercise obedience, the Spirit can then, based on that law of obedience, quicken you. And I think once again, I think a few weeks ago I talked about this, that we need to let our youth know there's always blessings associated with commandments. And one of the blessings is the Spirit can quicken us so we understand better, especially with school starting again. We can discern when we need to leave a situation and um, 
that's a gift of being obedient. Um, I love in chapter three, the milk before meat discussion. Um, milk was is still considered the good things of the scriptures, but the meat is for the feasting. And I think it's really important to know that we are hopefully all growing line upon line, precept upon precept. And so it's important to have a foundation. And then sometimes we want to get to the meat of the gospel. And we need to really savor and make sure that we're understanding the good things of the milk and not getting caught in the weeds um, of, of the gospel. Sometimes we get attracted to that and we don't have the foundation that we need. Joseph Smith told the sisters in Relief Society that no strife could be among them if they were to have the love of God with them and place their vain egos on the altar of the kingdom so they could go forward. Marlon K. Jensen talked about this as well. And this is important as we talk about all of us being needed in the gospel. In the church, there hopefully is some diversity of opinions and ideas. Everyone's faith is in a different perspective because we've all lived different lives and had different family dynamics and different challenges. And so when we sit in a Sunday school lesson and we assume that everyone is looking at a gospel principle the same way, we need to be careful about that. And I think we can encourage, especially with Come Follow Me, discussion in our homes so our kids and in our church meetings that we foster a safety around this diversity. And Joseph Smith really wanted the Relief Society to not have strife. And Marlene K. Jensen talked about this in his conference address that we need to put our egos on the altar sometimes because if we're gonna go forward in this kingdom, our egos are gonna sabotage conversations that can bless us. So as we look at our unity, I think it's important to know what our stewardships are. Sometimes our stewardships are over for me right now. It's personal progress, which is a program that's disappearing. And so it's interesting what the Lord has revealed to me to do in my calling and my stewardship assignment at this time, even though I know it's ending. And other stakes and personal progress leaders are being invited to do different things. And I think sometimes we need to be careful that... Um, we aren't trying to project. I love the, as we move through the discussion in chapter three about us being temples and, and there's a lot of discussion about sexual purity. And I think it's more important to talk about when we talk about modesty, sexual purity. Um, I like to emphasize that every temple is so very different. So when we try to make all of our bodies look the same, that's not the pattern of our heavenly father and that the temples have boundaries and you need a recommend to get in, and that's to create a sacredness about that experience. Um, and so, in in likewise, how are we treating our own bodies? And that stewardship over our bodies. I love Paul's example. He is talking to the disciples also in in the Corinthians, and he is exhorting them to be aware that they are going to have some opposition as we move into um, chapter four and five. I think it's important to know that we are in, enriched by the diversity that we have, but um, we can't always convince someone that we're going to believe the same. I was having a conversation today about existing in a place where we follow the Savior's example. He had a strict moral compass and he coexisted with those that had different moral values as him. It's an and. And I think Paul is trying to invite these people who are really having some struggles with sexual purity. Um, he, he goes on a big discussion about marriage in chapters six and seven. And I think it's, it, we need to be sensitive that there's mixed faith marriages, there's singles, there's slavery at this time. There's different traditions of marriage and, and this society was very sexually oriented and Paul was trying to wake them up. This is a great opportunity to have a discussion with your family about intimacy, about the beauty within the bounds of marriage that sexual intimacy and emotional intimacy can bring to a marriage. And I love in closing in chapter seven, um, the first few verses talk about fasting and praying together in your marriage. I wanna invite you if you are married um, or a parent or whatever, a grandparent, to share a time with those around you in your gospel discussion where fasting and prayer helped answered questions, strengthened your marriage. I know for our family, we have some things we can share this week that will liken this chapter to our family. Thanks for joining me today and this week.